What up, what up, and greetings! Welcome to another Hearthstone video. Today, I want to talk about the next four cards that Blizzard released over the weekend from the upcoming Hearthstone expansion, Whispers of the Old Gods. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. The first card that I want to talk about today is called Stand Against Darkness. It's a paladin spell for five mana that summons five 1-1 one -one silver hand recruits. So after Muster 4 battle that we got in TGT, and then Justicar Trueheart that came out in the Grand Tournament. We got another means of summoning multiple Silver Hand Recruits in the same turn. In TGT we also got Quartermaster and then in uh, Grand Tournament Warhorse Trainer that we could further buff our Silver Hands Recruits with. But unlike the two previously mentioned cards, I don't really think that Stand Against Darkness is any good. It's also quite boring of a card unless there's a crazy card coming out which maybe buffs itself depending on how many silver hand recruits you have in play. I don't see this card being played at all. It just seems like Blizzard is starting to hate on Paladins after everyone has been crying on Reddit about how unfair Secret Paladin is. Uh, they seem like, you know, they will just crush Paladin to the ground in this expansion. I, I don't know, but uh, it seems that way. Let me know what you think, guys. Uh, yeah, I don't really want to spend too much time on this card because I think it's quite boring. I mean, every expansion has to have trash cards and this might just be one of those trash cards. Second card that I would like to discuss today is Hogger, Doom of Elven. It's a 7 mana minion, 6-6, six, six, that whenever it takes damage it summons a 2-2 two, two Gnoll with Taunt. First of all, let's talk about why Doom of Elven. Hogger was a elite mob in World of Warcraft that used to be farmed a lot, but because he summoned a lot of gnolls, he subsequently killed the people trying to farm him, and yeah, hence the name Doom of Elven. He's the second legendary minion that they showed us from the set after Cthune. He's similar to Trogzog in terms of stats. You know what happened to Trogzog, how everyone thought that he will be totally overpowered, but then Dr. Boom turned out to be the overpowered one. It's a transformed version, similar to Polluted Hoarder and Corrupted Healbot. In a sense, it's a twisted version of an existing card of the Hogger that we all love and cannot play because it's so, so bad. Unlike regular Hogger, though, that can potentially uh, create infinite value in terms of gnolls being summoned every single turn, this one will only spawn them when he gets damaged. So if he takes one damage every time, he will summon 12 12 worth of gnolls, which is amazing you know for the value and he's pretty much guaranteed unless he's use hard removal of this guy to spawn at least one no so it's going to be eight eight for seven mana in two cards which is pretty good you know it's better than eight eight in one card that you can just kill with like a flame lance the bottom line is though that it's six six is just harder to deal with than four four i mean i haven't seen hogger survive until the next turn unless it was like a tavern brawl ever it always dies to Frostbolt and Ping or Swipe or anything. It's such a scary card because if it's hidden behind those taunts and you don't have a spell, it will just kill you straight away, like in World of Warcraft. This Hogger potentially, though, is a counter to Cthune because if you remember Cthune doing his arcane missiles, every time he hits Hogger, he spawns a Null. That Null can tank two extra missiles. So potentially if Cthune is ruling the ladder, I can see Hogger as being sort of a tech card against those Cthune decks. That would be really, really cool. Yeah, Blizzard, big up for the art, big up for, you know, upgrading Hogger for us so that potentially it will be played uh, for the next two years in standard. I love you for that. Hogger, Doom of Elven. The third card that they revealed is called Giant Sandworm. It's a hunter card, 8 mana, 8-8. Eight, eight. It's a beast, and whenever an attack of this minion kills another minion, it can attack again. What this essentially is, is Trample from Magic the Gathering. I sort of hope that they will make it into a keyword, because I think this ability is something that's missing from Hearthstone. The difference in between uh, Magic the Gathering and Hearthstone is that in Magic, when you attack with your minions, the opponent chooses which of these minions he will defend with which of his minions and which of the minions will go to his face. In Hearthstone, you choose to attack a minion or the opponent's face, unless 
the opponent has a taunt minion, which is sort of an exception from the rule. So, Giant Sandworm, it looks really, really crap on paper, but there are two cards in Hunter right now that are not being played at all because they suck, but this card could actually make them viable. One of them is Bestial Wrath. Bestial Wrath makes uh, your minion immune while giving it plus two attack. It's crap right now because it's a one mana immune for one turn. It doesn't really do anything unless you have a beast. You can't even activate it. Two attack doesn't really do anything. You don't really care about your beast dying. But if it's an 8-8 eight, eight that can kill multiple minions and it can attack into all of them, if you give them immune and it kills every single minion while not dying itself, that's a really good deal. The second card that gives you immune is Stable Master. So Stable Master is a 4-2 for 4 mana. That's really, really terrible stats. But this immune effect, I think, potentially gives you gives you an edge. It gives you an edge even over Bestial Wrath, because Bestial Wrath is it's just a spell. It doesn't have a minion attached to it. I think this is very likely to be used with Stable Master more often than with Bestial Wrath. But we have to see because uh, where this will fit is into a control hunter deck. And control hunter deck might be spell heavy, you know, it might use lock and load and it might use all of these cards. In that case, bestial wrath would be better. But I think what hunter really wants is to put more stuff on board and to sort of have cards that can do one and the other thing as well. So Giant Sandworm would really work well in those type of decks. It's a really interesting card, you know, uh, they are really trying to make Hunter into something else than this smork archetype that it was embedded into people's head as. Hunter is in a quite a bad spot right now because it's not better at smorking than some other decks, it's not better at being mid-range than some other decks, it's, not, it's definitely not better at control than almost none of the other decks, so... I'm looking forward as to what tools they give hunters in order to remedy the situation for them. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. And the final card that we're going to go through today is Eater of Secrets. It's a neutral card, 4 mana, 2-4, with a battle cry that destroys all enemy secrets and you gain plus 1, plus 1 for each. Uh, what I suspect is this card was made by someone on Reddit when they were getting shot on by secret paladins on the ladder and they were like, I'm gonna fuck them up in the worst way possible. I'm gonna destroy all of their secrets. Guess that mystic is not enough. No, but seriously, I don't really think that secret paladins will be a good deck in the standard meta. They're losing their two drops, their three drop, their four drop, their fifth drop, their seven drop. There's not much left, you know. Secrets are... Especially Paladin secrets are notoriously bad. Without a really, really good curve, the secret Paladin deck is actually not that great. I have been playing it, I have maybe 300 wins with this deck, and it is beatable. Trust me when I say it's beatable, I could not get to Legend with it, no matter how I tried. And I just don't think, I understand that uh, Tech Heart to battle secrets is necessary when we're losing Kazan Mystic. Kazan Mystic was a lot better against Freeze Mage. It was a lot worse against Secret Paladin because it didn't really do anything. But this card is really overpriced. It's sort of Black Knight overpriced where you have two mana extra to do the effect. Here you have almost two mana to do the effect. Therefore, unless it's like a take art to include on tournaments in one of your decks or something like that. I don't see the point of it. Without getting at least plus two plus two is not good. It's not worth it, really. Yeah, Eater of Secrets, I think it's a bit cheap. I don't really like the flavor of the card. I think it's an answer to Secret Paladin that was meant to come out maybe three months ago if they really wanted to do anything with it. You know, uh, now it's too late. Essentially, Standard already is killing Secret Paladin. You don't need to rub it in their faces with Eater of Secrets. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thanks you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. I'm going to be recording reviews for the cards as they're coming out. Can't wait for this set to already be here. But unfortunately, as I said before, we're going to have to wait for another two months. Keep your eyes out for more reviews. And until next time, take it easy.